Hi, my name is Marius Mates. I'm a creative dancer and I own a company called Break Dots, which is a dance company. I'm here today to tell you my story, which is my arrival to Coventry back in 2010, a city that I now call home. My train arrived into Coventry at 6 a.m. in the morning. I remember feeling anxious and nervous, but at the same time excited excited because it was a new journey that I was stepping into. Everything was new to me, especially my accent was very strong when I arrived and my English wasn't the best. Now, obviously the train station was my main contact with Coventry and I felt it represented uh, a lot to me. It represented a sense of arrival, but also departure. And now looking back at it, it gave me so many experiences and I feel like this space meant a lot to me ever since. I, w I actually wanted to know about the birth of Coventry and when I've done some research I found out that Coventry was a, a Saxon village and you have uh, this guy named Kofa who planted a tree and a settlement built around that tree and this is how Coventry was born. And back then Coventry was actually called a uh, coffin tree, meaning Kofa's tree. I felt that this story really represented in a way my rebirth and my reassociation with uh, dancing and especially break dancing. Actually, when I arrived here, I kind of stopped dancing for about six months and I didn't have any hope that I will return to this dance because there wasn't many opportunities um, back then and there wasn't a future. I couldn't see a future for me in this dance. But then coming here and going um, in the freshest week, meeting the Breakdance Society, which was um, a big surprise for me. I didn't even know what freshest week was. We didn't have that back home. And then meeting these guys and they were like, you know, we're the Breakdown Society. We go training every evening. I immediately connected with them. Yeah, I want to come training. Dancing really made me adapt very quickly. I felt like I, I was belonging here. I started training again. This is why dancing is so important because it really connects people, uh, no matter from what culture, no matter from uh, which country. All my dancing is self-taught, training in my room and watching YouTube clips. And I had a friend that um, every now and then borrowed me some DVDs um, with the hip hop culture back in US. And this is how I've actually learned, realized that there's more to this dancing uh, than it shows. After I started training the first week, I went into London um, and took part in the first competition and that was my very first contact with the breakdance community here. Me coming into this new environment, everyone kind of looks at you like who's this new guy and that's where um, my learning curve started. So I, I accommodated quite quickly. Um, to Coventry and to this new world, this new uh, journey that was I was creating. However, I knew if I wanted to do something with dancing, I needed to be more focused, I needed to be more disciplined. This comes from my experience when I was swimming, when I was a kid and having my teacher being really strict with me and the way I train. That's when I realized that dancing for me then was just a hobby. So in order to take it a step further, and I promised myself from that day on that I will be doing 110% to achieve whatever I want through this dance. I didn't know how it's gonna be, I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I just knew that I needed to do something about it. I, I used to hate the thought of getting old and not knowing what would have been, you know, and just take that energy out and really starting to, uh, to grasp this new me. I was in accommodation in Caliscourt. They had like a post room and uh, in that post room there was enough space for me to train. Back then not being financially stable, and not having a lot, I couldn't just go and um, pay for a studio. Student life is like 
trying to make ends meet all the time. So um, I, I would just train wherever I could. I had my uh, fair share of encounters with security guys, <laughs> even in uh, um, the Priory Hall and on student campus. Uh, just kicking me out. It was a constant struggle. I planned to go to a competition every two weeks. Sometimes I would just eat cereals without any milk, beans on toast. I was just finding this way of saving money so I can uh, travel, so I can um, really evolve in this art form, an, an expression that I couldn't escape from. In the beginning, competitions was a hard time for me. I wasn't really qualifying to anything. It was a constant fight, not knowing if what I'm doing is the right thing. Not even reaching top 16, it was a bummer for me. There was a switch and in one of the competitions, I arrived all the way to um, the semifinals. And that was uh, uh, such a huge achievement for me because I was starting to see real progress. Putting in the work, it really connected me with a lot of people, a lot of opportunities, a lot of stories. This community is built on, on people from different backgrounds and I felt like I'm, I belonged there. And then that's where um, I started growing. And that's when I met my dance crew um, from Birmingham, my dog crew back in uh, 2011 and we started doing uh, street shows having to see how people reacted to this dance in, in real life it really made my progression faster we started traveling internationally as a crew we started winning competitions and in the same time i was still studying in coventry i was still living in coventry i was still training in coventry doing my essays whilst on uh, national express coaches you know traveling from the airport yeah and this is how my um, international journey kind of started and i was always looking for opportunities outside coventry i felt like birmingham had a bigger a community back, back then for training marceau riviere he asked me to, to be part of one of his uh, theater shows. I've realized I have the ability to adapt breaking to that sort of setting. I was working with a violinist um, and with a whole orchestra. Uh, it was called uh, Orchestra Aurora and uh, Marceau was the choreographer. I remember it enjoying it so much that I just want to do that full time. It really uh, fired up something within me. It was just such a great experience. And at the same time, I was still at the university, still doing all the, the crazy stuff. Well, ever since I just dived in all the opportunities that I could get through this dance. And doing all these shows, it helped me improve in my in my breaking style as well. Having those rehearsal times with different dancers, with different companies, with different choreographers, it served as a, a mentorship for me. I just trained on this terrace um, outside my place where I was living at the time, which was on March Park Street. I would just put the vinyl on the floor and I would just train there. I woke up the next day and my knee just swollen and they told me that I cannot dance anymore for around six months. And I was like, oh man, the competition is just in two weeks. How am I gonna do that? So um, unfortunately I had to cancel. The next year, however, I trained even harder. And then I eventually managed to win um, the first national competition. I remember returning uh, the next year and winning a Red Bull. With these titles, it allowed me to travel to all these countries and meet some of the best in this art form, which really opened my mind in a lot of different ways. So after I won my um, first Red Bull competition, I came back to UK and I was getting ready to train for the Eastern European Finals. 
that's when I met um, Julia and Chris uh, from Theatre Absolute in Coventry and they offered me the keys to their theatre in order to train for this competition and I remember just having six to eight months to train for it. My final year came and I had been offered a gig, as you would say, in Iceland through an agency and they asked me to be the stuntman for the main character of Lazy Town. But at the same time, I had an important exam with my university, so I can't do this exam because I've been offered this opportunity. I thought that if I miss the exam, I can actually, even if I don't go to it, I will be able to retake it um, in the summer. And unknowingly, I didn't go to the exam, I took the gig, I went to Iceland and came back. I have to say it was one of the best experiences I had. The uh, date for retaking that exam came and they took my uh, student ID and the exam started. One of the guys came back to me and said, you're not supposed to be here. What do you mean I'm not supposed to be here? I think it was one of the final exams. I've passed everything else and I was like, oh my god, now I need to repeat uh, a module for six months next year. <laughs> Thinking back, I would have done it all over again, you know, just being there, being in the, in the, in the actual studios and meeting these actual, actual characters and people and seeing how a, a production works with all the green screens and the huge spaces and seeing another country and being able to, to work in, in that environment was just so overwhelming that, you know, it's even now it's one of the best experiences I had. My, my parents um, didn't agree to my dancing as being my full-on career and they pushed me to actually carry on with my studies and go into my master's degree, which I did. I studied events management, thinking that I was going to organize breaking events. And I wrote my dissertation on how to engage audiences within breaking events. When uh, I won my last Red Bull BC one, and um, they flew me to Japan. And that's where I was very surprised of how well the style of dance is received there. Although I was reaching out to all these other places and other cities, I knew at some point that I will have to come here and do my best for the community here. After the war where everything was bombarded, the city was is, is still trying to, to revive itself. Going into the cathedral the first time, attending some of the services, some, some of the Sunday services there. This city has a great community and I should be focusing on bringing my art locally and bringing all these experiences here. So that's why I think uh, it's very important for me to commemorate this place. The city of culture came on and Coventry won. I was one of the first artists to be performing with um, the City of Culture and introducing me to other people and asking me to perform in communities around Coventry. Coventry celebrates the good and the bad. You can always take all that bad energy and transform it into a positive. And this is what I feel like I'm doing with my own dancing. We should celebrate more our our commutes from our homes to work or just commutes in general. I feel like we are so focused as, so, as a society on the final outcome of everything that we forget the things around us. That's why I wanted to celebrate the uh, Ring Road underpass in Coventry. It was my main commute from my accommodation into the city center to other place, places around the world. What a, a better way to celebrate it than with dance. So why Coventry? 
Coventry has offered me all these experiences, all these opportunities. It made me embrace a new culture. I feel like I have a lot to give back to the city, being my second home and now living here permanently. This is one of the main reasons why I've opened a new creative dance company called Brectots, which is uh, uh, being representative of past, present and future. Brectots is me. Brectots is my experience, is my story and is everything that I've learned so far. The aim is to share those experiences and inspire an, a new generation and actually show that this dance it's it's more than than it looks like the olympics now taking on breaking uh, i think it's quite important for the community from this perspective it is really important to have ambassadors for this dance in local communities because you can share your own stories through this style of dance like never before. We have already started building the future and it looks great. And I just want to thank this research project led by Rosa and Marie and for offering me this platform to express myself and actually tell my story. Hopefully it will inspire you to tell your own story. So, what is your story?